And in just a second, we will chant Om once. After taking a full breath in with friction in the throat to clear your throat. And as we breathe out, we start chanting Om. Then I'll, we'll say the prayer and then we'll get started on the program. There are two words that anybody who's new needs to learn. One is Rechak. Rechak means breathe out. And the second word is Purak, which means breathe in. And the tone of our voice will tell you whether it's a quick Rechak, like if I say Rechak, you do a quick exhale. If I say re chuck, you do a slow, deep exhale. The same thing with purak. If I say half purak, it's just half a breath in. And if I say purak, it's a slow, deep inhale. So having told you about that for the uh, benefit of the new people, we'll get started now. re chuck, purak. Your hands in Namaste at the heart center for the prayer. And then begin. Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karvavahai Tejasvinavadhi Tamastu Mavidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Sit with your hands in Dhyan Mudra, close your eyes to avoid distraction and sit with your back upright. Now we're going to start the slow, deep and silent breathing, which is called Pranakarshan Kriya. And after we've done it, we've practiced it for five times. I will explain the benefits of practicing the slow, deep and silent breathing. The first three times we breathe in for eight counts and we breathe out for 16 counts. And for the last two times we breathe in for 10 counts and we breathe out for 20 counts. So you really need to slow down your breathing. So let's get started. Re Chak Purak Re Chak Purak Re Chak Purak Re Chak Now ten and twenty Purak Rechak Purak Rechak 
great job. Breathe normally, rub your palms together, spread the energy over your face and open your eyes. And now I'm just going to go through the process that you have already practiced and why it's called Pranakarshan Kriya as well as the benefits of practicing Pranakarshan Kriya. So Prana means life force energy and Akarshan means taking in. Kriya means the process or exercise. So basically, prana karshan kriya refers to control over that life force energy without which we cannot live. So, as you noticed, it's slow, deep and silent breathing. And if you were to place your palm on your abdomen, you'll notice that every time you breathe in, your abdomen expands, followed by your midsection and then your chest. And when you breathe out, your chest contracts first, then your midsection and finally your abdomen. So each time you breathe in, your abdomen expands. Each time you breathe out, your abdomen contracts. So it goes in. And that is because the diaphragm, which is a a very important strong muscle which sits just below your rib cage has a big role to play when you breathe in and out. So each time you breathe in, the diaphragm moves down to allow the lungs to fill with the air. And as you breathe out, the diaphragm comes back to its original place just below the rib cage to allow the lungs to expel the air. So that's the process. Now, as far as the benefits are concerned, the, one of the main benefits why we begin the program with Pranakarshan Kriya is because first and foremost, it helps to calm our mind. It helps us to improve our focus so that we can carry on the rest of our yoga practice in a calm, with a calm mind. A second benefit is that it stimulates something called cerebrospinal fluid. Now the cerebrospinal fluid flows around the brain and the spinal cord and has two main functions. The first is to protect the brain and the spinal cord. And the second is that it carries messenger cells that go throughout the body to keep all organs and all parts of the body functioning effectively. So by breathing slowly and through the nostrils, what you're doing is you're stimulating the flow of that spinal, cerebrospinal fluid so that all your body functions effectively. And a third benefit is that it increases our lung capacity. The normal lung capacity in an adult is between five and a half to six liters. But most of the time we breathe very shallow. So we use only about half a liter of that capacity. And by practicing the Pranakarshan Kriya, we slowly increase our ability to take in more oxygen by increasing the use of the full capacity of our lungs. And the last benefit, and as equally important as the others, is that when we breathe in and out through the nostrils, more nitric oxide is produced. This is a, um, a gas that is produced by the sinuses and the upper nasal passages. And it plays a very big role in preventing our getting colds and coughs. And, you know, with seasonal changes, we often get the colds and the coughs. But it acts as a defense host by helping the cilia, which, has, which are the hair-like structures in the nasal passages, to prevent fungal, viral, and bacterial infections. So those are the benefits of 
Rana Krishna Priya. I just have one. I just want to add one thing. One of the, the first thing that Chitra mentioned as a benefit is calming the mind before we start practicing yoga. So in uh, North America, perhaps in India also, you've heard that when somebody is very agitated or confused or angry, what do we say to them? Please take a few deep breaths. And when they do that, that helps to calm their minds. So, so those are the benefits. And we will be starting every yoga practice with the Pranakarshan Kriya. So the next on the agenda is our Brahma Mutra, which are the neck exercises. There are five types that we do, variations. And the first three are done with breath control. So we, when we make the movement, we hold our breath in the inhale condition. We come back to the normal position and then we breathe out. The last two of the five are done with normal breathing. So let's begin the first one. Just follow the instructions. Re chak, purak, deep breath in. Hold your breath, turn your head to the left. One, two, three, four, five. Now stretch your neck as much as you can. Come back. One, two, three, four, five. Re chak, breathe out. Purak. Hold the breath. Turn your head to the right. One, two, three, four, five. Stretch the neck as much as you can. Come back. One, two, three, four, five. Recha. Purak. Hold the breath. Turn to the left. One, two, three, four. Five, stretch, come back, one, two, three, four, five, re chakra, purak, hold the breath and turn to the right, one, two, three, four, five, stretch, come back, one, two, three, four, five, re for the second one, we hold our breath again in the inhale condition and we drop our head to the left shoulder and the right shoulder. And when we drop our head to the left shoulder, we place our hand away from us, fingers on the floor, right. so that, of the right hand, so that you feel the stretch in your right side of the neck better. So let's do the next one. Re chak, purak. Hold the breath, drop your head to the left, move your arm to the right, and hold there. Come back. Re chak. Purak. Hold your breath, drop your head to the right shoulder, arm out to the left. Come back. Re chak. Purak. Hold the breath, drop your head to the left, the right arm out. Come back. Re chak. Purak. Hold your breath, drop your head to the right shoulder, arm out to the left. Come back, re chak. For the third variation, we drop our head back, as far back as it will go, again holding the breath in the inhale condition. And we hold it for a little longer because most of the time during the day, our head is down looking at our devices, iPads, iPhones. So for the third one, we're gonna drop our head back and hold it a little longer. Re chak, purak, hold your breath, drop your head as far back as it will go. Face the front, re chak, purak, 
Hold the breath, drop your head back. Face the front. Rechak. Now for the next two variations, we breathe normally. So first just loosen your neck and we are now going to do gentle jerks. Starting from the left, center, right, center. Left, center, right, center. Left, center, right, center. Star. Now put your chin to the chest and we are going to do 360 rotations of the head. Starting from the left, back, right, front. Keep your head moving the whole time. Left, back, right, front. Left, back, right, and front. Now reverse that, starting from the right, back, left, front, right, back, left, front, right, back, left, front. Slowly raise your head, rub your palms together, spread the energy over your face and then open your eyes. Next we are going to do shoulder rolls. So place your hands on your lap but do not move them, focus only on your shoulders. We'll do both shoulders together up and back. So start one, two, three, four, and five. Reverse that. One, two, three, four, and five. Now place fingers on both your shoulders and touch your elbows. Each time you're going to touch your elbows. Up and back. One, two, three, four, and five. Reverse that. One, two, three, four, and five. And just relax your arms a bit. And next, we're going to do the Naman Mudras. Naman Mudras are bending postures. Again, there are five of them that we do. And Naman Mudras are not only going to be breathing exercises, but also they're going to help to stretch your limbs quite a bit. So the first one starts with the Namaste at the heart center. And if you are new, just watch first and you can join us next week. But if you understand the directions, you can follow along with us. With this Naman Mudra, we bow to the Supreme Divinity in the form of Earth. Om Prithve Namaha Recha Purak Take your arms up as you breathe in. Straighten your elbows. Recha As you breathe out, keep your arms right by your ears to bend forward. Stretch. Keep your arms stretched for a few seconds. If you're sitting on the floor, try not to lift your hips off your heels. And now relax your body, relax your arms by bending your elbows. And breathe as normally as you can. Now when I say reach up, you're going to do four things all at once. You're going to breathe out. You're going to stretch your arms as they were before. You're going to raise your head to align it with the spine. And you're going to apply the root lock, which means you pull in your anal muscles. Reach up. Ura. As you breathe in, keep your arms right by your ears while coming up. Reach up. Your arms come down. Now for the second Naman Mudra, you hold your right hand in your left behind your back. Your thumbs are interlocked to keep that hand in place. Stretch your shoulders back, open up your chest. 
With this Naman Mudra, we bow to the Supreme Divinity in the form of water. Om Jalaya Namaha Rechak Urak Rechak As you breathe out, bend forward with a straight back from your hip joint. Once you reach your spot, keep your arms stretched for a few seconds and then slide your hands up your back, drop your elbows, drop your head and relax the body. Breathe as normally as you can here. And remember to do all four things at once when I say Recha. Recha. Purak. Come up as you breathe in again with a straight back. Recha. Breathe out completely. For Naman Mudra 3, you interlock your fingers, place your hands at the lowest part of your abdomen, your elbows close to the body and your shoulders back. With this Naman Mudra, we bow to the Supreme Divinity in the form of fire. Om Agnaye Namaha Recha Purak Rechak. Bend forward with a straight back. And once you reach your spot, drop your head, drop your elbows. A lot more pressure on your abdomen right now. But remember that it helps to tone and massage all your internal organs. Try to breathe as normally as you can. And again, remember the four things you need to do when I say Rechak. Rechak. Purak. Come up with a straight back as you breathe in. Rechak. Breathe out completely. For Naman Mudra 4, you fold your arms behind your back and hold on to your opposite elbow. With this Naman Mudra, we bow to the Supreme Divinity in the form of air. Om Vayave Namaha Rechak Purak Deep breath in Rechak Bend forward as you breathe out. When you reach your spot, drop your head, relax your body. And try to breathe as normally as you can. This time, because we didn't move our arms, we do only three things at once. We breathe out, we raise our head to align it with the spine, and we apply the root lock. Rechak. Purak. Come up as you breathe in. Rechak. And the fifth and last Naman Mudra is where you fold your arms in front, hold on to the opposite elbow. And as you breathe in, you raise your arms above your head. As you breathe out, you bring your arms down. But when you bend forward, you keep your arms above your head. With this Naman Mudra, we bow to the Supreme Divinity in the form of space. Om Akashaya Namaha Rechak Purak As you breathe in, take your arms up above your head. Rechak Bend forward as you breathe out. Rest your arms on the floor if that's possible. Drop your head, relax your body and breathe as normally as you can. And remember three things this time when I say Rechak. Rechak. Purak. 
Come up as you breathe in with your arms right by your ears. And breathe. Bring your arms down as you breathe out. And rub your palms together. Spread the energy over your face. And if you're sitting on the floor, stretch your legs out. Relax your joints a little bit. And next we're going to do what's called Kapadhati. And for that, we sit in a cross-legged position. And it's a very good idea to sit at the edge of a rolled up mat or towel or a firm cushion. It serves two purposes when you sit in a cross-legged position like this with the mat rolled up. One is that it helps you to sit very upright. The second one is that some people don't have flexibility in their groins and their cross-legged position is like this with their knees up. It can get quite uncomfortable. If you have this raised behind you, you'll find that automatically your knees go down. So it is a more comfortable position. Now Kapal Bhati, for the person who's new today, is rhythmic bellow breathing. It's described as bellow breathing. And next Tuesday, we'll explain the benefits and the process once again. But very briefly today, um, it's rhythmic half breaths. So we, in all our breathing exercises, we always begin with a quick exhale, a quick recha. And that is in order to get rid of the superficial air in the lungs so that you can take a deep breath in or, as in the case of Kapal Bhati, continuously do rhythmic half breaths in and out. So you will probably be able to follow along with us. If not, you can watch us and then you can join us next week in doing the Kapal Bhati. But with Kapal Bhati, first we do it with the right nostril by closing the left nostril with the thumb like this. Then we hold our breath in the exhale condition. The last breath when we stop is an exhalation. We hold that breath for eight counts. And if you can't hold it for eight counts, you know that you can breathe in and wait to join us. Then we do Kapal Bhati with the left nostril by closing our right nostril. And again, we hold it, the breath in the exhale condition for eight counts. Then we follow it up with double the counts of Kapal Bhatis with both nostrils. And then we hold our breath with our chin down for 16 counts. And then when we breathe in, we do something, we practice something called uh, Amarkruti, which is you breathe in through pursed lips like this, as if you're whistling but you don't whistle, you hold that air in your mouth, you hold your breath for a few seconds, then you gulp the air and the saliva and you breathe out through the nostrils. So I'll explain that again before we do the two nostril kapal bhati, but let's first do the each nostril separately. We'll do 30 counts for each of the nostrils and then 60 counts with both nostrils. So get ready. Re chak, half purak, close the left nostril and start. Hold your breath. Purak, make it a deep inhale. Re chak, deep exhale. Purak. Re. Now we do 30 counts with the left nostril. Re chak, half pura, close the right nostril and start.
Stop, hold your breath. Purak. Reach up. Purak. Reach up. Now we are going to do Kapal Bharti for 60 counts with both nostrils. And then we hold our chin down when we hold our breath in the exhale condition for 16 counts. Then when we breathe in, we breathe in through pursed lips like this. Hold that for a second. Gulp the air and the saliva and then we breathe out through the nostrils. So get ready. Re chak. Half pura. And start. Stop, hold your breath with your chin down. Pura Pudvaisa and hold. Gut the air. Re. Purak Rechak Purak Rechak So as you will note, whenever we do these breathing exercises, the special ones like Kapal Bhati or Pranayam, we always do two recovery breaths which are deep inhales and exhales. Okay, That is to recover from whatever um, variations we did of the breathing exercises. So now we are kind of running out of time. So we're going to skip some of the breathing exercises. We will make sure we do them, all of them next week. But let's sit quietly and we're going to practice our Omkar practice, chanting of the Om. Then we're going to sit quietly, doing a brief Shatta Chakra Darshan. And then we're going to do the Agni Sara Nudyan. So we're going to skip everything else in order to make time for the Agni Sara Nudyan, which you learned last week, so that we get a little practice. But let's first sit in Dhyan Mudra with your back upright, eyes closed, and we're gonna chant three ohms. We breathe in with friction to clear our throat. As we breathe out, we chant Om, and we do that three times. Rechak, Purak,
Listen to the lingering sound of the Om in your mind. Observe your breathing and focus on the Ajna Chakra, which is located in the middle of the forehead between the eyebrows. Now let's begin the Shatra Chakra Darshan by focusing on the Muladhar Chakra, which is located at the base of the spine near the rectum. The element associated with this chakra is earth and the Bij Mantra is Lam. Now take your attention to the Swadhisthan Chakra. This is located at the lowest part of the abdomen and the element associated with this chakra is water and the Bij Mantra here is Vam. Now take your attention to the Surya or Manipur Chakra, which is located at the navel. The element associated with this chakra is fire and the Bij Mantra is Ram. Now shift your attention to the Anahat Chakra, which is located near the heart. The element here is air and the Bij Mantra is Yam. Now take your attention to the Vishuddhi Chakra. This is located near the throat. The element here is ether and the Bij Mantra is hum. And now bring your attention back to the, the Adnya Chakra in the middle of the forehead between the eyebrows where the element is ether again and the Bij Mantra is Ham Sham. Now taking your attention once again to the Anahat Chakra, which is near the heart. With love in our hearts and enthusiasm in our voices, we will chant two repeat Omkars. We repeat each Om six times and as we repeat it, we try to take our attention to each of the chakras starting from the Muladhar Chakra up along the spine, all the way to the Adnya Chakra. Recha Purak Om Rub the palms together, spread the energy over your face, open your eyes. So now we're going to do the two exercises to help with your elimination process.
to help your digestion and elimination that we learned last week. So to do the Agnisar, we'll do the Agnisar first and Kunal is going to do it standing up because you can do it either sitting, sitting down or standing up. So I'm going to be seated and Kunal is going to stand up. The position of the hands is the same whether you're standing up or sitting down. You need to sit in a cross-legged position for sure. And you hold your hands such that your fingers are on the inside and your thumbs are on the outside. You begin with a quick exhale. You take a deep in inhale and then a deep exhale. And as you exhale the air, automatically the, your abdomen goes in. Pull it in and out with equal vigor for as long as you can hold your breath in that inhale condition. When you can no longer hold your breath in the inhale condition, you're just going to stop, breathe in. Okay, so don't force yourself to go for too long. It's not how many pushes you do with your stomach, but it is the quality that is important. So really push your stomach out and pull it in with equal vigor. So get ready. Rechak. Purak. Rechak. Stop when you need to breathe in. And one of the main benefits of this um, yeah. Agnisar exercise is to push the fecal matter down towards your rectum so that it can be eliminated easily. But of course, it also helps to strengthen your abdominal muscles, which is very important for many, many reasons. Now for the second one, which is called Udyan, what the breathing is the same. We do a quick exhale, a deep inhale, and a deep exhale. And as we do the deep exhale, we hold our breath in that exhale condition, and we apply three locks. The first lock you apply is the root lock, which you already know how to do. You pull in your inner muscles. Then you apply the stomach lock, where you pull your stomach in and up towards your diaphragm. And then you apply the chin lock, which means you put your chin down on your chest. So what we are doing in effect is closing all the openings for the air so that the carbon dioxide tries to fly away. Ud means fly. It's trying to fly away, but it cannot. So it dissipates, it blends with the oxygen. That's what we are trying to achieve here. So the same position with your hands, fingers on the inside, thumbs on the outside and get ready. Hold only as long as you can. When you can no longer hold it, release your stomach lock, release your chin lock, breathe in. The root lock takes care of itself. Rechak. Urak. Rechak. If you're done, take a couple of deep breaths to recover from that, those two exercises. Uh, and if you are not able to do it uh, as well as you might have done it, remember that with practice, you do get much better. So don't fret if you didn't get it right today. You will eventually get it. And now I'm going to show you the Surya, the regular Surya Namaskar, and then Kunal is going to demonstrate it on the chair. So I'm going to do it at an angle because that's the only way you can actually see it fully. You may not see my hands.
going up, but okay, that's much better. So watch me please first, because that will help you with the steps, even though I call them out, it's good to actually watch. So you start with the Namaste at your heart center and one, two, you can bend your knees here slightly, three, take your left leg back, rest your knee on the floor and your right shin should be perpendicular. It should not be like this. It, you should be like this, okay? This should be perpendicular. If you do that, it's going to eventually hurt your knee. So you want to make sure that your shin is perpendicular. Your left knee is on the floor, okay? And then you put your hands down, you raise your back knee, and you take your right foot back. And now you're in a perfect plank, like a plank of wood. So you're not down with your bum down, nor are you with your butt up. So you're going to hold it in a nice plank. Then you put your knees down and you put your body down. And you touch your forehead to the floor. Then you straight. Flatten your feet behind you and you do Bhujangasana. So you lift your chest up. Then you curl your toes again and you go up on try to flatten your feet. This is called Downward Dog or Adho Mukhaswanasana. Then you go on your toes so that you can bring your left foot forward. Put your right knee down on the floor. Note that your left shin should be perpendicular to the floor, not out like this, but perpendicular to the floor. Then you raise your back knee, bring your right foot forward, and you come back to Namaste. Now you repeat the same thing on the right leg. Okay, I'm gonna call out each one but first, let Kunal demonstrate to you how it can be done on a chair for those people who are not able to get to stand up and do the whole Surya Namaskar. For those of you who are able to, I'm hoping that you will do it with me. To do it on the chair, you need to put the chair sideways like this. And preferably, if you have a cushion or a mat, put it on the back of the chair. And I'm going to count for Kunal and he's going to do it. One, two, bending forward with a straight back. Three, now you take your left knee up. You can rest the heel on the chair. Four, you bend down and touch your forehead to the knee. Five, so you take your knee down, your arms up again. And then you get your six. Six, bend down again with a straight back. Seven, you take your right knee up. Eight, you touch your forehead to that knee. Nine, you're going to put your knee down and take a namaste up. And then ten, your hands come down. So you'll notice that both of these are ten count Surya Namaskars. And I don't know how much you're going to be able to see of me doing the Surya Namaskar because I need space behind me as well. So you may not see. You need to come to the front of the mat and do the Surya Namaskar. So let me see if I think I need to leave it like this so that you can see my feet. So you're not going to see my face at first. So to begin, you hold the Namaste at your heart center and we are going to say a mantra before we begin the Surya Namaskar because remember that we are praying to the sun which gives us all life on this earth. Om Ram Mitraya Namaha I bow to my 
friend. One, take your arms up, bend back slightly. Two, bend your knees if you have to, touch your fingers on either side of your feet. Three, take your left leg back, your left knee is on the floor, your right shin is perpendicular to the floor. Now raise your back knee, take your right foot back, you're in a perfect plank. Now take your knees to the floor, take your body to the floor, flatten your feet, do cobra, curl your toes, go on your toes, try to flatten your feet, go on your toes again, bring your left foot forward, your right knee on the floor, your left shin is perpendicular to the floor, raise your back knee, bring your foot forward and come back. That is 10 counts. So I know you couldn't see my face, but I cannot stand back and do it here. That is why I have to do it that way. Now I'm going to try to do it sideways, but I believe that you still won't be able to see my face. So let's get do this with the right foot this time, right leg going back. So stand with your Feet about hip, hip distance apart, your hands in the namaste at your heart center. One. Om. Sorry. Om Reem Rave Namaha. I bow to the shining one. One. Raise your arms up. Slide back bend. Two. Bend forward. Your fingers go to the, on either side of your feet. Three. Your right leg back, your right knees on the floor, your left shin is perpendicular to the floor. Now raise your back knee, take your left foot back, you should be in a perfect plank. Put your knees down, take your body down, touch your forehead to the floor, flatten your feet behind you, do the cobra, curl your toes, try to flatten your feet on the floor, stay here for a few seconds, go on your toes, bring your right foot forward, left knee on the floor, right shin perpendicular to the floor, stay here for a second, then raise your left knee behind you, Bring your left foot forward and come back to Namaste. So we can just, I think we have time to just do one Surya Namaskar together. So follow my instructions again. We're going to do it very slowly because I know that it's difficult the first time you learn it. So come to the front of your mat. Hold your namaste and we're going to say the next mantra. Om Rum Surya Namaha. I bow to the beautiful light. One, take your arms up, bend backwards. Two, bend your knees slightly if you have to. Put your fingers on either side of your feet. Three, take your left leg back. Left knees on the floor. Right shin is perpendicular to the floor. Stay here for a second. Now take your, raise your back knee. Take your right foot back. You should be in a perfect plank. Now put your knees on the floor. Your body on the floor. Your forehead touches the floor. Flatten your feet behind you. Do Second. Go on your toes, bring your left foot forward, 
right knee is on the floor behind you, left shin is perpendicular to the floor. Stay here for a second. Now raise your left knee, bring your, sorry, right knee and bring your right foot forward and come back to Namaste. Now we do it with the right leg going back. So start with the Namaste at your heart center. Om Ram Bhanve Namaha. I bow to the brilliant one. One, Namaste, above, backward bend. Two, bend forward, bend your knees if you need to. Three, take your right leg back. Your right knee on the floor. Your left shin is perpendicular to the floor. Raise your back knee. Take your left foot back. Now you're in a perfect plank. Now your knees down, your body down, your forehead to the floor. Flatten your feet behind you. Do cobra. Curl your toes. And see if you can flatten your feet behind you for Adho Mukhashwanasan. Go on your toes and bring your left foot forward over the right. Make sure your left shin is perpendicular to the floor. Your right knee is on the floor behind you. Raise your back knee. Bring your right foot forward and come back to Namaste at the heart center. And that's all the time we have today. So, we were talking about the third one yesterday of the eight signs of good health. The fourth one is feeling energetic throughout the day. And one of the best ways to feel energetic throughout the day is to remain active, to do some form of exercise in the morning. And I think today, if you joined us in doing the Surya Namaskar, I'm sure that you are going to remain active the rest of the day. So, having said that, I will ask Kunal to give you the thought of the day. Then we'll chant two ohms and the prayer to close the practice. So here is the thought of the day. There are two kinds of pride, both good and bad. Good pride represents our dignity and self-respect. Bad pride is the deadly sin of superiority that reeks of conceit and arrogance. I'll repeat that. There are two kinds of pride, both good and bad. Good pride represents our dignity and self-respect. Bad pride is the deadly sin of superiority that reeks of conceit and arrogance. Okay, so to close the practice, we'll chant two ohms. Always remember, before we chant om, we breathe in with friction in the throat. It's ujjayi breath, to clear our throat. Rechak, purak, om. Center for the prayer. Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jotir Gamaya Mrutyoma Amrutam Gamaya 
Thank you all. Have a great day.